How are the mighty falling? How are the mighty falling? I don't understand. It is no longer news that the Methodist church pilot, Samuel Uche, was being adopted by Fulani Hesmen and he paid 100 million ransom before he was being released. What is happening to the body of Christ today? Where have we gone wrong as the body of Christ? We, the sleeping Christians, must need, must wake up. All the Christ, sleeping Christians in Nigeria and the world as at large must wake up. This evil and siege in the body of Christ must have to stop. This was when the pilot came back. We thank God for his life. He came back successfully. And this was when the church members are welcoming him back. What happened to our brothers and sisters at our war, St. Francis Catholic Church, that they came with a bomb attack and killed over 40 members? Hey! My people are not understand what they happen. How can the power of God supersede the power of God? This is a wake-up call for all Christians all over the world to wake up to the reality of the siege the enemy has placed on the church. A wake-up call for everybody, not saying no consign you, because I could remember when did they keep Christians for northern part of the country. Some of the southern Christians relax when I know they pray, when I say no consign me, no consign me. Now you don't enter the southern part. Who know which next part you go enter? So this is the time. Make everybody gather yourself. Whether you be white garment, or whether you be redeemer, whether you be deeper life or assemblies of God or living faith, or gather yourself for prayer. Because if we not see, if we not pray to stop this evil, the Bible says, when a man fail in the times of adversity, adversity, your strength is small. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek the face of the Lord and seek for forgiveness, then will I hear from heaven and heal their land. So this is a time for Christians all over the world to unite. We need unity to overcome this evil. Look at what is happening in our country. I don't understand why the power of God will supersede the power of God in church. The power of God is supposed to fail them. Where is the power the church carried before? Where is the power? We are losing it as Christians. So we need to wake up to the reality of what is on ground. More than 40 people are killed in our world in, in, in our recently. And others are still taking treatment. It is not supposed to be so. It is not supposed to be so. Christians, wake up. Please, if you come across this video, don't be stingy with it though. Don't forget to like this video. Comment on this video and share to your friends. Subscribe to this channel if you have not subscribed to this channel. Because this is the subscription is free. This is the only avenue where you get good content of current things that is happening in the society. So please, I'm calling on all Christians to wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, make up now, wake up. No be time where you go from say, I know be my church, oh, I know they go this church, oh, I am not this, oh, I am not that. Oh. This is not the time oh, because we have failed as Christians. All the church is particular about these days is wealth. Where is the power? The power of God is not supposed to supersede the power of God in church. As they come, they are supposed to turn dundi, dundi. They're supposed, they're supposed mad. They're supposed to hang up for there. But no power. No power for church again. Everybody won. Everybody, everybody won. Won hammer. The church is concerned. All the church is concerned about is how they want to build churches. They are building this edifice. They are building this. this they are building that. They are growing here. They are going. There. They are not particular about about the spirituality and the power of God. There is no power in church again. It's miracle, miracle. So please, all Christians, wake up to the call. Wake up to the reality because this thing will. This thing has to stop. I remain your humble sister from another mother. An excellency of the Federal Republic of my kingdom. Tahila the Great. Always love you. Don't forget to comment on this video. Okay, now let me allow you to hear from the pilot himself. The experience he had in the hand of the kidnapper is going to give you details of what he passed through. This was when we came back and we were facing And shortly now, the pilot is going to give us the details of his experience in the hand of the He was supposed to be so. Contact me. Not to the church. Not to 
use it to pay ransom to rescue Christians. Thank you all for watching. I want to uh, brief Nigerians on the actual thing that happened because there has been so misinformation on the social media and on the regular media. What happened was that I went to uh, Isochi for the induction of the national officers of the Methodist Brigades. We arrived there on Saturday, on Sunday, we concluded the service. And in order to catch up with my flight, uh, along with my chaplain, at uh, 4.30, we took off by 2 to go to the airport. Oblivious of the fact that uh, kidnappers were waiting on the road. And uh, as we were descending to Leiru, Leiru is in Abia State. These people came out from the bush. They divided themselves into three places. Some people were at the back, some people were at the center, those who shot, who fired at us. And there was another group in front to make sure that we didn't run away. They fired shots at our vehicle and eventually they abducted us, three of us. The uh, communication man of the church was able to escape. The driver was able to escape. They captured me, the, the Bishop of Owere, and my chaplain took us into the bush and were torturing us. In fact, it was uh, in the process of uh, that torture that I hit my right eye on a tree. And uh, even when blood was flowing and I was, it was soaking my handkerchief. They didn't feel like uh, anything happened. All they said that we should follow them, that they are not actually against uh, Nigerian citizens, they are against the government, that the government is a bad government. They are full of boys, all of, all the eight are full of they are, they are full of boys, and that uh, if they, any day they see the president, they will chew him. He's uh, their brother that they have disappointed them and disappointed Nigerians. They will chew him raw or any of his representatives, they will chew him wrong. Well, I said, well, even though I'm part of government, but I'm a church man, I'm a man, Christian, I'm not a, a government official. They said, okay, uh, that is what has saved you. You would have killed you outrightly without asking for any ransom. But now that you're a church man, uh, let's go. Let's go inside the bush. So we moved and moved and moved and uh, and, and trekked up to 15 kilometers. But I knew that it was from my area. I knew that we were rigmaroling and winding and winding and winding, going up, going down, going up. And uh, eventually at 11, 11 p.m., they said, uh, okay, now we negotiate. Each of us will pay 50 million, and we're going to pay 150 million. I started, I thought it was a joke. I said, we are, we are going to pay 10 million. They said, what? What? Don't say that. We will, they lifted up their, their knife to cut me. I said, please hold on. They said, we are not going to change you. They are going to pay us 150 million. Eventually, they said, okay, because you are father. Uh, and these boys are between 18, their leader is about 35 years. I told them, you are, all of you are uh, younger than my own daughter and my own, my, even my son. So you are younger than them. I'm supposed to be your father. I say, we know. That's why we are not very harsh with you. Otherwise, we would have been very harsh. One of them was the one understanding English. The other ones were spoken Fulani, not even Hausa. So the... They now say, okay, Oga, let us tell you what you will do. By then, they have taken my Episcopal ring, 
because you go plated, they have taken my wedding ring, they have taken this thing. They said, um, and they took all, ransacked our bag and took all the money. They said, okay, do you know what to do? Pay us 100 million. You know, the negotiable. If you talk, we shoot you, kill you, and forget about the money and kidnap others. I said, okay, we will pay you 100 million. So they said, after some time, they said, where is the money? I said, this is Sunday night now. How can we get money this night? And you know that there's this seat at home at, uh, in, in uh, Igbo land. You can't afford the money now. Be patient your money. We make contacts. Then we make contacts uh, within and around uh, Imo and Abia. Make contact from our SOC. My wife line was not going, so uh, I know she was. Uh, she must have been very uh, depressed and confused. So eventually, I was able to get her. I told her my life will not have happened. I told my wife I will release, but uh, it's a matter of time. And she told me she had already got that people to pray. So they were praying. Now, at the time, they said, we had delayed them. My my bishop of Oware, they laid him on something. And somebody raised knife. And they're going to cut off the head. Now, the blood mm -hmm. will spill on me. And then I'll know they're serious. The other one pointed, but I said, don't kill you. need money. We will raise the money for you. So, but the irony of it, what paid me most, was where they were situated, uh, the soldiers, soldiers, all of Fulani extraction, Nigerian soldiers, they were there at Loma Junction. And these boys uh, were going behind them. Meanwhile, they kept their cows somewhere, numbering about 200, somewhere, down, 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 with some people, and they're all together. The people were taking care of the cows, but they were, you know, already lost in the bush until finally they settled somewhere. They said, uh, when are you bringing the money? I said, 12, by 12 noon, I will call the people I contacted whether the money had been raised. And I called them. They are gathering the money and they had it. They said I will use my phone to talk that they can't use their phone. They don't want to be tracked. So if I they use their phone, the, the security of uh, forces will track them down. And then I used my phone. I negotiated. I told my people, they say we are raising money. Somebody mentioned we have raised 30 million. I said, SOC, please, any money in the office. Life is more important than money. Transfer it to a certain account. Let's pay them that 100 million. And uh, eventually, by 3 p.m., they say, call your people. And I called them. The man that uh, picked the phone said, we have raised 130 million. I said, please, give them 100 million. And the package, they said, the, their leader said, package the money. Their leader was born in Igbo land. So a boy from Sudan. But the parents had died. He was born in Igbo land. So he said he was born around Omai, Amuzu, where the, the father was a cow, a cow dealer, cow. The boy understood the Igbo. When I was talking to uh, Bishop Mark in Igbo, he said, Are we working now? my Igbo. So stop talking Igbo here. Think we are joking with you. Ow, beat you. So don't beat me. I'm an old man. So eventually they, they, they in fact they pointed gun at us we were at the middle as criminals and they were pointing all their guns on us and they said if you involve security men if you involve police or soldiers or dss we will kill you because we will, our, our life will be at risk we kill you first he said down there once you did that gun there are seven uh decomposing bodies there in fact, we cut off their head. They are there. So if you like, but we are we are perceiving the order of kill the human beings. So they said the uh, corporate. So the man, the anchor man, I told him, uh, what you may do, please uh, talk to the man. The man said, go and buy five Ghana must go. Big big one. Put 20 million, 20 million into five. Bring it to somewhere. We'll come and take it. Then he said, uh, then he said uh, that uh, 
we should be here with two. Two of them were one was like this one. They pointed gun at us. They said if the Oga said shoot, if we disappoint them, or if we account any bundle of the money and it's not up to ten million, they will kill us. So they will count it twenty twenty million into five and then they will tell them to release our phone. They say, Oga, okay, where we don't want to release your phone is when we don't want to hold your phone. They will use it to track us. So take your phone. Well, we were there. At the time, they said, around 5.30, the, young, the youngest boy, who I think is a younger brother to their commander, said, okay, congratulations. You are free. You can go now. We have got our money. You can go. Let me show you the road. They took us to uh, old road where they wrote welcome to Imo and the goodbye from Abia. You know, we share boundary, old road to Isoch. Then they say, you know this road? I said, I don't know. I pretended because it's my village. Who is my village? I said, I don't know the place. They say, follow this road. You get to somewhere. You see people there. So I follow the road. We follow the road through us until we saw people. But the, what pains me most is that <laughs> these people told us that they are going to bring, after buying enough weapons, they bring all those that are, uh, have been uh, put in this array, or driven, driven away from Zamfara, Kassina, uh Zambisa Forest, that they are all coming to locate themselves in Iboland, that there's no security in Iboland that uh, they will mm -hmm. come there and then they will deal with us. And that uh, the dumb man was just flippant. Maybe he took uh, some, he said, do you know uh, Ibado? Ibado, uh, Lagos Expressway. We are in all the bush there. We're everywhere there. We're also in the south-south. Um, uh, so we are, we are waiting for the uh, you know, slightest signal. We will finish you people and take over this land. They claim that Nigeria belongs to Fulani. They said it. that is why we are afraid of, you know, I've been talking about this uh, open grazing and uh, this uh, roga. Mm -hmm. yeah. They have a plan. They have a plan. And uh, I, I accuse the soldiers who are not non, non Christians, some of them are Fulani. They are part of it. Well, they are shooting this man. You know, when our people wanted to comb the, the bush, the soldiers said, if you Move a step with three shoes. Don't go there. So they know where the boys are. They know the location. And uh, what they do is in the daytime, they use their cow to confuse people. Then after some time, the cow will go to rest and they take their gun and do the operation of kidnapping. Um, government should act decisively. They should act decisively. Otherwise, uh, what is happening in the northern part of the country will be a child's play. So what will happen here? So government should sit up because uh, the primary purpose of government is to secure life and property. Any government that has failed in that has failed woefully. And Nigeria is in, on a reverse gear. We are not diving. We are, we are not diving. You know, we don't have security. All the bush we went around, no soldier, no police, nothing. The people, you know, were having a field there. And the way they released us was if they can have people along the super top, they will they will parade them round and round, round, round and there when their parents and they are released from that particular spot. Those they are arrested, they, they kidnap along the new express where Lord Panther, they bring them. Eventually they bring them there to collect ransom. Those they cannot along anywhere, anywhere in the south, uh, around the southeast. So they are, they know that they are there. And I, I gave that. When I said to the other guy, how do you collect this money? He said, don't worry. Once we are through with you, we'll, uh, we will invite uh, motorcyclists. They will come and there will be a truck. A truck will come to, to put the money in the truck. And that, the people who paid them said that, that was exactly what happened. Immediately they came out from the bush. They, uh, they took
told them they were much monitoring whether there is police or um, They said, go up, 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 up. Okay, come back, back, come back, come back, come this way, come this way. And then eventually they stopped. A truck came without number. So uh, the boys will carry one gram of the who put in the truck. And then they took the 100,000 after they have counted it, 100 million. They said, okay, you can go. So that's how we came back. So uh, the people have been saying, even some people, I don't know what they wanted to achieve, that I said. Why did they see me to say that it was I pop that it is? <laughs> Why did they see me? Why did I say I pop? I didn't say that I pop. So I don't know, they were trying to bring in political yes. and religious coloration. Mm -hmm. So what I know was that, uh, in fact, when they were talking about it, but I didn't know what it meant. For over 12, 13, 14, 15 hours, no food, nothing to drink, nothing to eat. And I was lying on the ground inside the bush, so, with the, along with other people. If you want to, you want to urinate, you raise your hand. So I can I urinate? Okay, go, 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 go there, go there. Commandment, go there. If you want to go to the toilet, you raise your hand. Yes, okay, go there, go there. Don't come near. Go there, go there. They will send you two people to guard you. You come back. So that's the Nigeria we are in. It's unfortunate. This is what ha exactly happened. And all the efforts that were made was by my church. Do you understand? Yes. Every effort made was by Methodist Church, Nigeria. Nigeria. Not police, not army, not, not, not government. No. It was Methodist Church, Nigeria that made all the contracts and all the efforts. And I want to use it opportunity to thank my. I didn't know that my 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 my, my, my members love me this way. The Methodist Church have so 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 great love, stupendous love for their leader. And I knew that the prayers, was, prayers you know, were going on in various locations everywhere. And this morning. When I opened my phone, I was receiving calls from Canada, from the US, from the UK, from uh, Russia, from uh, even Dubai, from uh, Turkey, every part of the globe. And uh, it was too much, so I had to switch off again. But if I start answering those calls, I, I will be having a headache. So that's what happened, clearly. I want the press to know what actually happened so that people will not come and tell you what can post story. <laughs> For instance, a government said they, they secured my release. I never saw the government that said they secured my release. All we need is leadership. When we get responsible, responsive leadership, leadership that knows how to manage men and resources, Nigeria will, be, will, will become stable and Nigeria will progress. Our problem now is bad leadership. A leadership that does not care, a leadership that is irresponsible, a leadership that is callous, a leadership that, you know, when you are a leader, you have become Nigeria. You don't, you are not a leader for Fulani, a leader for Igbo, a leader for Yoruba, a leader for Aosa or Ishekli. But look at what is happening with the appointments. Who are the security officers? Who are the people that are immigration? Who are the people that are in customs? Who are the people? They are responsible for what is happening. And they have an agenda which we fail. That agenda we never succeed. Yes. And I had no place to run to than my church. I said my church should mobilize funds. And you know, when I have about 2 million members in my church, 50 50 cobotas, 2 million. You know what it means? Or, 10, 10, or, or even 100, 100 naira times 2 million. So it's my members. Just the way we do this. That's how they raise the money. They don't have oil well. They don't have a location. And the resource base of the church is human beings. So, but let me tell you. Anybody who extracts money from God's institution, the church, <laughs> is, is, is having... Is having a romance with death, mm -hmm. calamity. Yes. 
Yes. Because the people that give the money gave it under tears. Mm -hmm. So it will not go well to whoever uses it. It's blood money. I need not speak for Khan or the PFN, but as Christians, uh, are you in escalating this position? Khan, Khan, Khan make a let me tell you, Khan made a statement already. Yes. That was a release by Khan. And, and they said that the government should make sure that their leader, because I'm one of their leaders, mm -hmm. is released within 24 hours. They said it to government. So Khan, Khan is disturbed. And what the Council of Judges said, they have also made a statement. Uh, we don't, well, let me tell you, I don't stand for, um, uh, uh, I don't stand for, don't, whether you're a Christian or a Muslim or animist, be a leader. Be a leader like uh, Nelson Mandela. Eh? A good leader is what we need. Because what has killed this country is uh, tribalism, ethnicity, religious bigotry, nepotism, injustice. No matter your religion, be a leader that is fair to all. That's a true celebration. Thank you, sir. Thank you.